All right, what's up, you guys? It's TJ DeStefano from Advanced Training. I just want to take you guys through some simple pick and roll reads. We're going to look at a few different players that are really efficient. Don't do anything crazy flashy. Now, don't get me wrong. They're capable of it. But they play very efficient, and they make sure that they maximize what they do off the dribble, off their triple threat. They get to their spots, and they finish extremely well, either through contact or through floaters and pull-ups. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of clips with some different guys and just kind of show you some basic pick and roll reads that you might be able to add to your game today without having to work too hard. They're pretty simple. So here we're looking at a guy named K-Ron Baker, plays at Louisiana College, was one of my teammates at Blinn Junior College. So one of the main things that I want to say for these first few clips is that anytime you have a two-man side or empty side ball screen, I personally teach first read is always a try to reject. If you try to reject and you get cut off, it sets you up to still be able to come off the screen. And a lot of times you'll put your defender in a position where it's hard to recover and come off and they'll be late trying to guard that screen. So here KB gets it on the wing. There's a two man ball side and all he does is take a little load step right here. It's not even necessarily a full blown triple threat jab. He just loads up and he drives baseline. Now the big uh, defender drops down into help. He does a great job actually anticipating and getting down, beating KB to the spot. But KB splits him, jumps off two feet, and right there, this is another important part. KB jumps off two feet and goes into the defender's body. He doesn't wait for the defender to initiate contact. He initiates the contact and is the aggressor. Therefore, there's no chance for him to block the shot because he can't get up off the ground as high as he would like to. So we're going to watch this again. Slow motion, then we'll take it full speed. So he takes that little load step right there, boom, gets his defender leaning towards the screen. He's already thinking about the screen, so as soon as he takes that little load step, he's off balance. KB's got that first step on him, splits that second defender, jumps into his body, tough finish off the rim. Good job, KB, that's tough. Now let's watch it full speed. So boom, they swing it, boom, jab, split, two foot finish with contact, easy money. So here we go. Now, same situation. This time, KB catches it on the right wing. Last time was the left wing. This time, it's the right wing. Same scenario. Two-man side, empty side, ball screen. He's got one, two, and then three teammates on the opposite. So this time, he knows I'm going to try to reject first. I'm going to go baseline first, and he gets by. Once he gets by, he uses his angle and his body again to cut the defender off, jumps back into him and finishes again right off that rim. So let's watch it again, slow motion. Catch. This guy's worried about the screen. He rips right by him. Now he starts to cut him off right there. He's not waiting for the defense to cut him off. He's using his body to get back in front. And then two foot finish, jumps into the defender's body, finishes out of the rim. It's a tough finish, good play, very simple. Didn't do anything crazy. Just got to his spot, used his body to finish. Now, here we're watching a guy named Trey Pulliam. This is one of my best friends, one of my teammates when I was young. Right here, same scenario. Now, look, defense is standing straight up. That's when he knew he was beat. TP knew I could go right by him. He's standing straight up. He's not as quick as I am. It's going to be an easy drive. So he's got one, two, empty side, and three teammates on the opposite side. So, again, I personally teach first option when you got an empty side ball screen, always reject. He catches. He drives baseline. And, again, Two foot, left, right, adjusts in the air and finishes. Now that is a very tough finish. He made it look smooth, he made it look easy, but he's attacking towards the baseline and he redirects his jump towards the middle in order to avoid the defender and then uses a nice little finesse finish with some English off the glass, tough finish. So three clips in a row, empty side ball screen. The reject got them an open finish. Eh, I shouldn't say open. It got them a finish, and they used their body well to be able to get to that rim and convert the layup. So now we're looking at KB. He's coming off here. Now look, the big hedges. Big man slides and doesn't let him turn that corner easily. Pretty good job here. I would try to send him more up the floor, but I'm not sure what Letourneau was doing in terms of their defensive strategy. So this is maybe what they wanted. Now, as soon as the big leaves and turns to go back to his man, KB knows I now have the advantage. He's not looking at me anymore, so I'm going to drive right off his butt. When he does that, he now makes his defender have to turn and run, 
again, jumps two feet straight into the body of the defender. So he drags the big out. Once the big turns, he uses his downhill momentum to get his defender turning and sprinting. He jumps off two feet into the body of the defender. Nice little finish. Here we are, Tremont Waters from LSU, played with the G League team for the Celtics for a while, played on the Celtics for a while. I'm not sure who he's with now, but still a really talented basketball player. He's playing professional somewhere. So he comes off this screen right here. Now, this is something that I really want y'all to be aware of. That big hedges right here. Again, he does not wait for the big to leave. He does not be soft and pick the ball up. Boom, he goes right through his hip. So we're going to watch this one more time. We're going to slow it down a little bit. The big comes up, and instead of shying away from contact or picking the ball up and trying to find the open man, he simply attacks that top hip. He is the aggressor. He's not waiting. He's not timid. He is the aggressor, and he blows through that defender's hip. In doing so, he is now created an angle to drive because instead of getting forced up the floor, he has now turned downhill. Now, as he drives, this time it's a one foot finish, but watch how he still uses his body. You see that bump right there? It's very subliminal, very small, but he goes into the defender with his jump right there. Skipped a little bit. Let's go back into his defender right there with the jump and then a tough left-handed little flip finish. Super skilled player, Tremont Waters. Now, here we are. We're watching Andrew Nimhard. This time, I want you guys to pay attention to his subtle ball fakes. Number 22 comes and sets the screen, but he decides to slip it. All he does is show the ball, raises his defender up, two feet finish. Again, into the body. So you guys have now seen, I believe that is five or six clips straight. There is always some type of initiation of contact on the offense, play, offensive player's part. They're not waiting for the contact. They're not trying to embrace the contact. They are initiating the contact. They are the first one off the floor jumping into the defender's body. Now, again, we are going to watch this in a little bit of slower motion. Slip. He, shows a, uh, he does a subtle ball fake. It is not very um, overdramatic. It's not very crazy. He just simply shows the ball high. And what does 34 do? Stands up a little bit. His weight raises. His center of mass raises. So now Nimhard has a step on him. That's all you need at the higher level. If you're a great player like this, again, Gonzaga undefeated until the national championship game. Nimhard, a transfer from Florida, already has established himself in the Division One level. Great, more, uh, super skilled player. He gets that step on him. He turns that corner. And then from there, right, left, into the body. Nice little finish off the backboard. Now, here we are, Trey Pulliam. This time, we're looking at floaters, right? We just watched them drive straight to the basket, jump off two feet, and initiate contact. This time, he comes off. Wetzel, number five, decides to slip. Doesn't really set the screen, but because Trey's defender is caught up thinking about the screen, he gets frozen, and Trey gets that angle to get around him. Now, as Trey realizes that he's got the big on his heels backing up as opposed to closing that gap and trying to force it to the rim he's got a very good touch on his floater he's one of the better i say he's probably got one of the best floaters in college if we're being perfectly honest so he takes the space he's given and just flicks it up in that little in-between area he doesn't force he takes the space he's given doesn't close the gap Gets that floater right up over the big. Nothing but net. So let's watch it full speed. Gets the angle he wants. Right, left. Nice little pull up. Now, one more small detail I want you guys to pay attention to because you'll see it come back later when we talk about the lobs off the pick and roll. As he's driving, he keeps his shoulders closed. So he's not opened up necessarily towards the defender. Now, he's slightly straight but right there you see his right foot is back his left foot is forward his shoulders are closed and he rotates in the air that is a great position to be in for a floater because it means that your defender cannot come over your shoulder to block it he would have to go through your body which would be either a foul or give you an opportunity to make a read so here we go this time 
Here we go. Trey gets the ball screen from Wetzel again. This time he goes and Wetzel again slips. Doesn't necessarily set the screen. Just runs and then uh, slips it. But because the defender's worried about it, Trey gets that angle. And again, defender, big man's defender backing up. He just takes the space that he's given. Goes straight up into it. Nice little one-hand flick floater. Let's watch that again slow motion. So we're going back. Boom. Gets the angle he wants on the defender. He cuts him off with his body. So now he's trailing him on his hip, trailing him however you want to look at it. And he just raises straight up into that floater. That is a great read and a great shot. Now here we are watching KB again. Now KB, empty side ball screen. One, two, and then three teammates on the opposite side. So he takes a hard jab rejects and gets straight into that floater again this is not complex this is not difficult this is not anything that you know he didn't have he does have a bag but he didn't use a crazy bag to get to the shot right here he jabs gets his defender out of the way and then before the help can meet him he pulls up in space and shoots that nice little touch floater so he's here screens coming as the defender realizes that there's a screen he tries to cheat the play it jumps so let's go back Defender realizes the screen. He tries to jump it. KB just gives him a nice little jab. Gets right into that touch floater right at the rim. Keeping it very simple but very effective. Now here we are, Tremont Waters. So here we go. Empty side ball screen. One, two, one, two, three. Now here, he goes into a pull-up. So now we've seen finishes at the rim. We've seen floaters. Now here's the next one, a pull-up. Again, I want you guys to pay attention to the small details of how he attacks the big right here. So as he comes off this screen, the big, he's a little bit late on the hedge. So not great defense, but it's the principle that we're looking at. He comes up, and instead of shying away, instead of slowing down, instead of turning back and trying to go back where he came from, he just attacks that top hip again. Again, not great defense by this guy, but... The principle of attacking the top hip is still there because he turns that corner his man had to go over the screen because if he didn't Trey my waters would shoot it and now he's got to go under the big so he's in a position where he's sprinting to try to recover he's looking downhill trying to make sure Trey Mont waters doesn't get in the paint he takes the space he's given rises right up for an easy pull up nothing but net so let's watch that again full speed so boom screen comes he attacks that top hip, turns the corner, right into an easy pull-up. Good shot. Here we go. This is KB again. So KB bringing the ball up the floor. Defender decides to try to overplay. He jumps the screen. KB reads it. He rejects. Same thing. He gets right into that mid-range area. He doesn't force himself to go too deep and meet the big. He just simply goes to the space and pulls up in space that is a wide open jump shot if a coach tells you that the mid-range is dead go ahead and show them these clips and show them that when you have a good mid-range jump shot it should be like a layup because he rejects this screen guy overplays one drill two dribble pull up right left straight into the easy jumper for two great read by kb great conversion of the shot now here we are looking at quentin Grimes, uh, quentin grimes of houston so Right here, this is a guard-to-guard guard screen. So this is not even big to guard, but it is still empty side. One, two, one, two, three. He comes off. Now, I'm not sure if Temple was supposed to switch. I'm not sure what their defensive tendencies are, but they get caught up here, right? Just from the guard-to-guard guard pass and screen, he gets caught up. He gets right into this little pull-up in the elbow area. One, two, easy money. So watch his footwork, right? Last time KB did something similar. He comes off, one dribble, two dribble, right, left. Pulls straight up into that shot. Easy money. Here we are, looking at Trey Pulliam again. Now this time, I believe we are looking at pocket passes. Yes, so that is beautiful. Now we're going to take it back. We're going to explain it in detail. So... They swing and follow into a ball screen. Again, empty side. He could have tried to reject if he wanted to, but he decides to use it. So he comes off the screen tight. Look at that. There's no space for the defender to get through. 
He is going to get caught up. He either has to choose to go under or to trail over the top. He decides to trail over the top. So Trey holds his space. He does not collapse the space. He does not rush into the space of where the help defender is. He holds it, and that allows the play to develop for his big man to roll to the rim. So because he held his space, 33, a rope gets to roll. And right as soon as he gets behind this defender, it's over with. Bigs at this level should be able to finish a layup with somebody behind them nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10. However you want to say it, they should be able to finish that almost every time. So Trey comes off, holds his space, a rope rolls, easy finish, great pocket pass as well. If you don't know what a pocket pass is, he picks it up, throws it right around his pockets, off the floor, bounce pass, easy layup. So here we are looking at Trey Pulliam again. He's coming off this screen. This time he rejects. He sees that his man is playing high side. This is called an ice. Now, most teams will ice it a little bit harder. He's kind of just standing. But again, the read is the same. He goes baseline side. He drags the bigs help defender all the way to the short corner, which gives his man a time to roll. Again, when you get that deep and when you are behind the defense, if you're a big man at the Division One level, you should finish that nine times out of ten. So here we go. Watch it a little bit slower. He rejects, takes two dribbles towards the baseline, and once he knows that he has that big committed towards him, he just drops another little pocket pass right in the gap. Bad help by number 10. Easy layup for a rope. Another great read, another great pocket pass. Here we are, Trey Pulliam again coming off the screen. This time it's a high ball screen, middle of the floor. He still gets the guy to come off and has to trail. This time he slows down, pocket pass again. Now, this is where we were talking about earlier where I said watch his footwork on the floater and how he keeps his shoulders closed. So, as he comes off, he slows down. What does this look like right here? Almost the exact same footwork as if he was going to go into a floater. So, the big raises his hands. And Trey drops it below. He fakes high, throws low. Great use of a body uh, body fake and a ball fake to get the easy layup for his teammate. So let's watch that one more time. Full speed. Comes off. Slows down. Holds his space. Boom. Easy little drop pass layup. Great read. Great pass. Great finish. Here we are. Tremont Waters. He is waiting for the screen here. Now, Florida has one player already forcing him to use the screen and the big already kind of in a soft hedge scenario. So instead of forcing it off the screen, trying to create for himself, Tremont Waters recognizes that the big's help defender is already out of position. He goes ahead and slips the screen and he just drops that pocket pass right in that gap. So you don't always even necessarily have to use the screen. You don't even necessarily have to try to create for yourself. You can just read how the defense is playing, have your big man drop into the open gap, and then it's an easy layup for number 11. Great read right there as well. Very simple, very efficient, very effective. Here we are, Tremont Waters again. This time drives baseline. So this is a similar scenario to what Trey Pulliam did against Utah State that we just saw a couple clips ago. They are icing, which means sending him baseline. He drags the big all the way down to the short corner which gives his big man a chance to roll straight to the rim, dunk on his head. So he drives baseline hard, makes the bigs help defender commit all the way to him so he has to stop the drive, stop the ball's ability to score. And then the big man rolls from the wing where he looked like he was going to try to pick and pop. He recognizes that his defender gets dragged all the way down, drop pass, little pocket pass, bounce pass, and he just goes straight up, dunks on him. Great read, way to drag the big down, and then way to drop it in the pocket. Now, here we go. Trey Pulliam coming off again. Now, this time, he rejects the screen. He sees that 10 is forcing him baseline. He rejects. He waits, and there, the lob. This is where his floater has made him an elite lob passer at the Division I level because if you watch the footwork, again, we're getting very detailed with it, but if you pay attention... He comes right here, and he goes 
right left if you were to stop right here and if his face was to be looking at the rim as opposed to his big man that is the exact same setup as his floater so they are looking as if he's going to shoot it and his big has time to roll right behind the defense no help from the backside guards he lobs it straight up to the rim easy dunk for 23 great read great lob pass great use of his body and his eyes to be able to get his teammates open so here he comes off again middle ball screen high ball screen same scenario this one he doesn't necessarily take the little right left hop but he keeps his shoulders closed the defense is not sure if he's going to shoot a floater try to spin try to drive to the rim he's got all his options the big drops back behind the defense he throws it right up to the rim he converts the lob so again we'll watch it slow motion one time and then we'll watch it full speed drives holds his space doesn't collapse it too early as the big commits to him he's basically outside of the lane line both feet right here and his roll man is right in the middle of the paint they don't actually stop him from rolling to the basket they're just kind of uh jumping stun playing the middle ground so he just throws it straight to the rim where nobody else can get it but his big great lob great finish here we are kb so now we've seen finishes at the rim we have seen floaters we have seen uh lob passes now we have seen or we've seen pull-ups and then we've seen lob passes now we're watching what happens when the defense goes under the screen so whenever a defender goes under if you have a good jump shot like kb has it should be game over you see he does not hesitate even for half a second here the big comes to screen his defender goes under he takes one dribble he recognizes that he is below the three-point line it's too late that is threes please all day for kb good read good decision same player kb right here so again empty side ball screen this is more of a transition you could call it a drag screen but it's just a side ball screen side pick and roll his defender gets caught up and goes under now one thing that i really like about kb here is he sold a baseline drive and then crossed back now although that is subtle it forces this guy to be aware that he may drive baseline so in his brain although he knows this screen is coming he still is somewhat worried about if he's going to reject and go baseline he goes under kb pulls up for three easy money let's watch it one more time in slow motion comes off defender goes under the screen bad decision against a guy like kb who can shoot that thing easy money three points on the board for him now here we go trey pulliam san diego state again so here this now is a uh field side three-man side ball screen fill up whatever you want to call it he decides to try to reject the reason i like exactly what i said about kb in the last uh clip is that when you try to reject a screen now i told you guys to reject an empty side ball screen but here is the reason why this works even with a, uh, somebody in this same side corner he tries to reject which forces his defender down then he's under the screen has to try to decide whether he wants to go over under fight through it whatever he does he kind of just stays in the middle ground tp gets a nice easy pull up i told you guys this at the very beginning when you try to reject it can put your defender out of uh, position and give you a little bit more space as you come off the screen so you see here this is set up by his attempt to reject because then he's so far down and then he sees the screen and it's just too late you can't recover if he does if he tries to sprint up right here if he was to try to turn and sprint trey would just come off that ball screen and then it would be two on one against the big because he stays so low trey just sits behind the screen shoots it nothing but net easy money three points on the board for san diego state now Traymond waters again coming through he gets it okay screen comes he does a great job here he swings the ball to the left but he goes right just a subtle ball fake to get his defender leaning and there he's too late once this guy goes under the screen if you can shoot like Tremont waters can it is a wrap now again another small detail that i want you guys to pay attention to is when this screen comes 
he does not take another dribble into this area. If he was to take one more dribble, whether it be towards the elbow or up the line towards the three, uh, top of the key, he would be meeting number 12 where he's trying to go. You see his angle right here. He's forced more up the floor. So when he stops behind the screen, he can't even contest. So watch him. He goes and he takes one dribble. He recognizes quickly that his defender's going under the screen. So he doesn't take the, another, the second dribble. He just stops right behind that screen. He goes off the screen, one dribble, recognizes he's going under, stops behind the screen. Number 12 can't do anything about it. Cash out for three. So that is all the clips on the pick and roll that I wanted to show you guys. You guys saw two foot finishes. You saw floaters. You saw mid-range pull-ups. You saw pocket passes. You saw lobs. And you saw finally, when a man goes under, we just pull up for the easy three. I really hope you guys enjoyed this film breakdown about simple pick and roll reads. I'm going to try to do more of these and do them more often. So leave comments in these comment section about what you would like to see. Maybe players you want to see or situations. I'll get on them ASAP. And I hope that you guys will subscribe, like this video, and continue to follow me on this journey as we continue to grow as players and people. Appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.